always great catching up with the number fourth ranked bantamweight Corey Sanhagen who's got a lot to talk about and we just had the big title fight on the weekend Corey how you doing man how's everything hey James I'm doing good man how are you I'm doing awesome. Uh, you mentioning on your uh, channel um, that uh, Davis and Figueroa turning down a fight against you in December. How surprising was that? Uh, yeah, real surprising, man. So I told the UFC after the last loss, I was like, look, guys, like I just took an entire year off. I don't really want to spend another long stint without fighting. Like, can I get in before the year's end? And then they were like, yeah. And I, they were like, well, who do you want? And I was like, I mean, Figueredo is kind of the guy that makes the most sense right now. So they tried to put that together, and then I suppose I don't know if it was like specifically Figueredo that didn't want the fight, or if if it was his camp or what. But um, I mean, yeah, he just didn't want to fight. So uh, I don't really know what his plan is, and uh, I'm I'm a little annoyed just because I feel like he just made a comment recently about how he's gonna win the title and then defend it three times and then retire and all of this, but then he won't fight you know, the tougher guys at the top right now, even before he's the champ. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe he'll change his mind. I'm hoping he changes his mind because there's really not a lot of other people for me to fight. I know that Jan is, like, still saying that he wants to fight at the end of the year. But in my head, I just can't imagine somebody getting ACL surgery in March and then coming back before the year's end. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's, like, a 12-month out until you can actually – compete in normal sports and our sport isn't even a normal one so uh, i don't really know what jan's play is there or maybe i'm completely wrong but uh, yeah i don't really i think that they're really trying to figure out what to do with the division and i think it's a major bummer that you know me and Figgy can't fight right now, especially because O'Malley's saying he's going to sit out for a year. You always hear stuff about, oh, did someone really turn it down or what happened? You and Davison have the same management, correct? So you would have some insight onto that, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, a little bit more insight than normal. Um, yeah, I, like I said, not, I don't not know there's someone to like make stuff up. I'm just saying that like it adds even more to what you're saying because you guys are under the same management. So I could see there being a lot of insight into that. Right. So, uh, I mean, definitely. And I'm also not really the guy that really likes doing the whole speculation thing. I think, yeah. you know, like, you know, so, uh, I'm almost positive that that's the scenario, but like I said, I don't know. I, I, I would doubt that it's actually figgy and maybe it's his camp or yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I guess, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I, I don't really have like a full, I don't think, good grasp on what it is that happens when guys say no to fights. And The only thing I can think of is that maybe they think they're getting the title shot. That could be the only thing I'm thinking of. Because, you know, there is, that that is the big case, obviously. Is it Umar? Is it Davison? Technically, Davison has more ranked wins than Umar. But I think you're the best win in the division. So, and I think a lot of people feel that way. So that's why they think it's Umar. That's the only thing I can think of. Unless there's an injury or something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, but I mean, I think that they have made it like crystal clear, especially showing Umar after the last fight. Yeah, I know, I know. So, I about it. So, uh, I mean, that that would be my guess too. But there's like no way that he's going to be next for the belt. So, I, I don't really know what his thinking is. And then I just, I really hate like when people talk big comments, like I'm going to win the belt and then I'm going to. Uh, defend it three times and retire and then you like won't take fights against some of the tougher guys so i don't know that irks me about the sport man that that really irks me because i'm always one to say yes so i don't know now uh we'll talk about uh, some options next uh, in a second i know we kind of went through that right now but i i gotta get your take on the title fight um that was a one-sided fight i know i think there was a 48 47 scorecard i still see the o'malley fans saying oh it was close i don't think it was i i watched a fight where one guy was dominating most of that fight um, what was your reaction to, you know, Marab's performance and, uh, going in, how did you think it was going to play out? Yeah. I mean, I thought O'Malley was going to catch him until I kind of started getting a little bit closer to the fight. And I started talking to other people like, uh, and just getting their opinions and what they thought and blah, blah, blah. And so I was honestly it, not to change my mind because I'm really bad at calling fights, but I did change my mind in this one and go Marab towards the end of it. Okay. Um, like once I started to reflect on how badass it is to go on a 10 or 11 fight win streak and then also never be finished or anything like that, even though he does get clipped in some of his fights, like uh, the shots that he got clipped in weren't necessarily like they were lead hooks. They weren't really things that O'Malley even throws, but I thought Marab did awesome. I think he fought the fight that you should fight if you have Marab's skill set against an O'Malley. I think he moved when he needed to, needed to move. I think the thing that I was most worried about is Marab's just a very excitable guy. And I was worried that he was just going to not be patient and he was going to bounce around and then make a mistake by going in 
and he was completely patient. He was cool in there, uh, except for the whole Tim Welch and his thing in the, in the beginning of the fight. But, uh, man, he, he just did such an amazing job. And that's a really, really good win because o O'Malley is a really serious fighter. And then even his one before against Henry still in my head, that was like such an amazing fight. So I know that a lot of fans were like kind of bored with that one or whatever, but I really do like watching chess matches. And I think that that was Marab just out chess in O'Malley. And that was exciting for me to watch. You and me both. I, I get so annoyed with people saying it was a boring fight because it just happened to go the, the, the distance. It's not like Marab was, you know, laying on him and making sure he couldn't get up and not advancing or anything. Like, he was he was throwing shots at O'Malley. I, I thought I, you had said it perfectly. Like, it is a chess match when you're watching fights like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, we're in agreement there. Um, obviously, we found out that O'Malley was injured, I guess, going into the fight. I know fighters are never 100%. Do you think that impacted the fight or do you think the result would have been the same? Uh, no, I think that the result would have been the same. I, I, I even asked around, I was like, Hey, did O'Malley look off or was it kind of the style matchup you think? And most of the answers that I got from people were it was the style matchup. And I kind of agree with, I think that you just don't get to open up as a striker when you always have to worry about someone taking you down, yeah. um, especially if you get held down for as long as O'Malley was being held down. Like you really don't get to open up because it's just one of those. And you have a lot of ground to cover for the rest of the the round even if you do get up so i think it was the style man i think that uh it's probably an injury that he's kind of been putting on the back burner for a long time like i did that a couple of years ago after i think it was the yawn fight or something i was like look i gotta get this surgery because i put it on the back burner for way too long and uh took a little bit of time off that way so um no i, I think that uh it didn't have much to do with the injury it was probably one that he's had for a long time that he just put on the back burner and uh and now is probably a good time for him to take some time off unfortunately because i know that the fans are like dying to watch me. they are man that's I, that's all i've been hearing since saturday Corey sanhagen sean o'malley next i know it's kind of a it, it it's really a bummer man because i was really hoping to get that fight one and then two dude like it's really important. Like the fans get really excited about fights like that. And that's just a bummer that they don't get to have that fight right now, at least. But even like in the future, man, you never really know what's going to happen in the future. It kind of reminds me of like uh, three or four years ago or whenever it was when people were really trying to hype up a me and Dominic Cruz fight. And then that Cruz that I mean, Cruz just never ended up taking the fight is what it what happened. And uh, he had other opportunities and he took those ones and that's just like a bummer, you know, when you get to just have that happen, that just sucks. So I hope that that's not the case in this one and that the fans eventually get to watch me and O'Malley fight. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that, that was a major bummer after that fight that I, I don't get to have that one soon. And just to be clear, uh, O'Malley, according to what I read on, on Twitter, from his Twitter, I uh, scheduled to have surgery October 3rd. It'll be sidelines for approximately four weeks. And then obviously, even after that, he's got to get back into a full camp. So, like, I know you want to keep active, but that's also like a huge fight. Is there any part of you that's like, maybe I would wait for that fight? No, I'm, I'm not going to wait till the summer for O'Malley. No way. Yeah, okay, uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, no way. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I like fighting, man. I was just out for an entire year. I really wanted to get something in December, but... I think it's, you know, realistically going to be a little bit longer than that. And, uh, and yeah, it's a bummer. And then I even told the UFC, I was like, Hey, like yawn too. Like I would love to get that win back. And, uh, and so, but like the thing with yawn man is like, he's saying that he wants to fight at the end of the year, but I don't know. I can't imagine someone going through a 10, 12 week training camp fresh off of an ACL surgery that happened eight or nine months ago. Like that's a, that's pretty ambitious. I might be wrong, but that seems really ambitious to me. The only other name I can think of, and, and I don't know if this is something you've thought of, but Henry Cejudo is like the only name that's sitting there on the rankings that's relatively close to you outside of Piotr Jan and, and Davidson. Because the other two guys, you beat Cheeto Vera, you beat Song Yadong. Uh, Rob Font's got a fight booked. Aldo would be, I'd love to see you fight Aldo, but he's fighting Mario Batista. Um, do you think there's any possibility of a Henry Cejudo fight? And is that a fight you'd want? Uh, Henry's another guy that kind of makes me nervous. It's almost it, not in like a fight sense, but in like a way, like, is this guy actually going to show up? Like, yeah, I feel like Henry's kind of thing right now is to say that he's hurt until there's a matchup that he really wants. And then he goes after that one, you know, like a song makes a lot more sense for a Henry, especially because it does irk me a little bit that Henry gets to just come back and then have every single fight that he's asking for. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think that that's got to, like, that can't be the case. Like, he just got beat pretty significantly by, by Marab. 
uh, you can fight down the rankings a little bit and fight some guys that we've beaten before if if you want to like work your way up. But you don't get to just be like this figure that calls his fights and gets them every single time. So, um, and he is talking about going to 25. But I think if he's going to stay at 135, he should fight Song. Okay. Um, and then I mentioned that Aldo and Batista fight. I, I know that's coming up like shortly, but if for some reason Batista's out, is that a fight you'd, you'd want to take? I mean, I know it's tough coming off a loss. Would you want to take something on short notice or would you rather just wait to see what happens? And maybe Aldo could be an opponent because that's like a legend fight right there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I would wait to see after the fight. I'm not going to take some short notice. I, I think Don't that, blame uh, you, by the way, coming off a loss. Totally yeah. understand that. Yeah. Well, well, not only that, but I, I still think that I didn't lose a ton of stock in that fight that I just had either. Like I, I got to show it sucks losing, of course, but I still got to show a decent amount of um, improvements in my game and work on some things that I, I, I built a lot of confidence in in that fight, specifically, obviously, in the grappling department. So um, so I, I still think, man, I'm like one, two fights away from being able to fight for the title. So uh that's why I'm kind of bummed that these, you know, or at least the higher ranking guy, Figueredo, isn't interested in the fight because I think I beat seven, eight, nine. So I don't know. Let's talk quickly about the Umar fight. Um, you know, it was a great fight. Like, I know you didn't end up winning, but the takedown defense, like, that was one of the most impressive things in that fight was how many times, like, I know you did get taken down, but you showed as well, like, the, you know, the the, the evolution in your, in your takedown defense. Um, you know, there's a lot of good fight IQ on both ends. I think his striking's come a long way. Maybe that was something that was a bit different. And I know you said after the fight as well that you maybe wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. What were some of the takeaways now that were, you know, a couple months uh, removed from that fight? Yeah, I mean, Umar did a great job. He, uh, I, I kind of, I think I practiced the takedown defense a little bit too much and should have maybe practiced the striking part a little bit more. But uh, I'm saying that like half teasing, but I was definitely prepared for the grappling, of course. Um, and then, uh, and then, you know, I did expect him to kick a little bit more. He wasn't kicking. Like where he was having a lot of his success was in strike, uh, like in his punches. And so that was a little bit unexpected. Um, and yeah, Umar did a great job. I, I, I kind of am like slapping myself still on the forehead about the way that I started to fight that fight later in the fight. I think that I fought a really good first round, but still like being in Abu Dhabi, being, you know, a little bit of the underdog and then also still just like realizing that he did have one takedown towards the end of the fight. I think I just kind of overcorrected going into the second, third round just because, I didn't know how close that round was. And then, I mean, either do my corners and it was just like a tough round to score. And then when you kind of run into that problem, you kind of have to start making adjustments. And then I think I just really over adjusted going into round two and then lost that round. And then in my head, I'm down two instead of it tied one, one. And then I have to overcorrect a little bit more. So it was just a lot of uh, my stupid brain getting in the way of, uh, you know, things and just not seeing things how they should have been seen and me overcorrecting. And uh, hopefully it's a fight that I get to get back. But uh, I can't like I can't be too mad at myself for that one just because I did give it like maximum effort. At no point did I quit in that fight. Um, I knew that I was down going into four and five and I had to start like throwing paint at the wall a little bit just because I had to start getting finishes. And, uh, you know, I can't really beat myself too much too much about that one but ah still sucks and still hurts but the, i think the coolest part about the fight and again i know the result isn't what you wanted it was very high level like you know it almost reminded me a bit and i know it, it was a different fight but you remember gamrod and uh, armin a couple of years ago like just really high level like you're seeing stuff that you don't see in normal fights right like there's a lot of technique involved and i thought that was the most uh, interesting part of that fight so uh yeah anyways i, I was entertained uh, anyways um so you mentioned it there uh umar most likely fighting for the title i think most people agree how do you think a fight with him and Morab goes? Because they're kind of similar. They're also kind of different as well. How do you look at that fight? Yeah, that one's going to be real interesting. You know, I mean, Umar is a way better striker than Morab, but also so is Sean. You know, the I guess the only difference is, is that will Umar be able to stop the shots? And I say that with like a lot of caution because I know that Umar is a really phenomenal wrestler, but also at the same time, like Morab is a different level of grappler than I think that the division's probably seen, you know, like the, like I always go back to the Suhudo and Marab fight, like, man, just the adjustments Marab was making the reads that he was the way that he was able to train wrestle. It was just like, so, so good. Like, and 
that's against Henry Cejudo, who won an Olympic uh, medal at like 18 or 19 or whatever. So uh, I think that Marab is still going to have a bit of the grappling edge. The problem with Marab's grappling is that he doesn't really like pin people to the mat or take their back or make it like O'Malley was able to get up. Not the easiest in the world, but when he did kind of really go for get ups, he was able to get up. So I don't know that Marab's grappling like like that's something that if I were him, I would really work on because I Umar, even if he does take Umar down, is not going to be an easy guy to hold down. Um and then just the striking difference in those two, like Umar is just a way, way better striker. Um and so yeah, that's gonna be really hard for Marab. Uh, so I, I guess I would I would go for Umar just because the striking is so much different, and then Marab's grappling isn't necessarily tailored towards holding people down, and Umar is a much better grappler than O'Malley. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that's likely how it'll go is it being mostly standing and Umar getting getting off a lot of points and just outpointing Marab. Yeah, good good analysis on that one. Um, something I don't know if I've ever asked you before, but you haven't lost a lot of fights for me to say this. What did you do after the loss? I saw your Instagram post where it was like the most random compilation of photos. I think someone even com com uh, commented on that. How did you handle that loss? What did you get up to? Uh, what did I do? Me and my wife stayed in Dubai for a couple of extra days with my mom and my mom's friends. So that that was like fine, I guess. I was pretty much sick of the heat by that, by that point. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't really do too much. I, I kind of was sad about it for a couple of weeks. These things matter to me a lot, so it really sucks when you lose, you know? Like, uh, that's why I'd, I don't want to be or wasn't too insulting when I was calling out Sean is just because <laughs> I don't want to kick a dog when he's down. Like, mm -hmm. uh, just especially that guy, man. Like, that guy's had a pretty good run at everything, and now his world is maybe a little shaken up. So your world gets shaken up a little bit. Um, I kind of like... Uh, I kind of like writing, so I kind of like uh, I like writing stories and just uh, stuff like that. So I do a decent amount of that. Um, I hang out with friends a little bit, and then I kind of just hang out with my wife. And then right now I'm just training a lot. Uh, you know what's really funny is once I I take usually about like ten days to two weeks off after a fight just because my shit and like my ankles just kill and my hands usually hurt. But uh, going back to training after like a two week thing is really, really fun, especially when you don't have a fight coming up and you kind of just get to go in for a week and mess around and remember that this is like a fun hobby that you used to do and not like a really cutting edge competitive career of yours. So uh, I really enjoy like that part of training where I get to just go in and kind of have fighting be an, another hobby for a little bit. And then, uh, and that's like fun for me, you know? I believe if I remember last time we spoke, the Umar fight was part of a new contract, right? Because you were in the main event of that, or, or is that just an extension of your old contract? Or Well, I guess what I'm asking is what's the latest with your contract? Uh, I got a new contract after I fought Cheeto, so I'm two fights into it. Oh, nice. Fights. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you got some fights left. Um, You referenced Dominic Cruz, something I don't understand, and maybe you can explain it to me. He hasn't fought since 2022, but he's still in the rankings. Does that bother you, or do you think that... Um, you know, that, that because of what he's done in the sport and he's been a champion that they should just wait on. Like I'm of the belief that if you haven't fought for a year, regardless of injury or whatever, they should remove you from the rankings, but just remember where you were. What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I think that there should be some type of stipulations on it. Um, maybe a little bit longer than a year. Cause it's maybe not like super, uh, like not fighting for a year is fairly normal. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose if you have an injury and stuff, but uh yeah i mean i don't think that he should be in the rankings because he hasn't fought in a really really long time and nor does he really talk about fighting or anything like that but um but yeah i, I suppose i don't know man i i have like this weird ability in life to really not care about too many things right. like the, rank the rankings is kind of one of them like yeah. if you ask like the amount of things that i really like truly have an opinion on mm -hmm. it's maybe like five things um so uh, that's what makes doing interviews so hard but uh um yeah i mean yeah I, I, I guess where i'm coming from is like there's fighters that are active right and i think like that should be rewarded so let's say you get a couple wins in a row but you're not in the rankings because you've got a dominant cruise there i guess that's where i'm coming from it's like that i feel like that should be rewarded not that it's cruise well I, yeah i don't know if it's cruise's fault or not but i just it's not like it's not like he went into witness protection like we know we see him on the broadcast you know what i mean like i could see if it's something where it's like hey we can't get a hold of him but um yeah that, that that's kind of where i'm coming from i guess and it's nothing against cruise i just think it's part of the rankings you know 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would say uh, if I was not in the rankings and I was trying to fight my way into the rankings, that would be one of the five things that I do have an opinion about. But <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay. Last question. I always ask you this every time because uh, you're one of the few guys that uh, reads a lot. Uh, any good books you're, you're getting into right now? Anything we should be checking out? Uh, I'm reading a book called Prometheus Rising by a guy named uh, Robert Anton Wilson. Um, you guys might like it. I don't know. It's kind of like... Uh, it's more of like a psychology book, spirituality book. It's kind of some far out there stuff as you kind of get further along the, the book. But that's what I'm kind of reading. I got away from comic books a little bit. Um, and actually, I'm trying to look for a new book to read because I'm about done with this one. But uh, if you like, like, read my Instagram posts, you'll probably like uh, the book Prometheus Rising because it's a bit random, a little bit funny, and then like kind of a little sometimes on the serious side of like psych psychology stuff. You should do like a book club on your YouTube channel where like you go through all the books you've read and you're like, this is what I recommend if you're in this mood or this is what I recommend if you want to learn about this. Have you ever thought of doing that? Uh, I, I, yeah, a little bit, you know. Um, I, I think people I, would be really, into it because people want to know, like we know you as a fighter, but I know there's there's more to you than a fighter, Corey. You know what I mean? Like I think that would be kind of, that could be a hit. I don't know. Yeah, all right. Maybe I'll give it a try. What what would I do though? I would just like review books or just show like... the books that you have and like, you know, say like this is this this is a good book that helped me with this or this is something that I found really interesting. Maybe you like it. You could maybe even if you want to go a step further, you don't have to. I know you're a busy guy, but maybe put like the Amazon link in the description, say this is where you can get the book. Maybe you should talk to Amazon, get like a kick kickback every time they use the link. You know, see I'm looking out for you, man. All right. Hey, I might do that. That actually sounds like a great idea. Good pitch. There we go. Get my 10% if anyone buys any books. Uh, Corey, <laughs> thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Uh, anything you want to mention before we get out of here? You got the YouTube channel. You got a bunch of other stuff, uh, your social media. I'll give you the last word. Uh, no, that's about it. I got YouTube. I have Instagram. I don't really still understand Twitter quite yet. Um, and uh, I don't think that I ever will. But uh, also instructionals I sell online at CoreySanhaganMMA.com. And then all your merch you can get at CoreySanhagan.com also. 